SC teams, as well as all the local uh, police and fire organizations throughout the state of New York, because this is an epic statewide hazard. There's no other way to describe this than this is having an impact everywhere. And fortunately, we have the most experienced team in America to deal with all kinds of disasters. And let's start with Commissioner Jackie Bray, who I was embedded with for five straight days, eating probably way too many Paula's Donuts in Western New York uh, about five weeks ago. Uh, we were there. We were trapped. We had Commissioner Dominguez with us as well. And uh, you know, we had a chance to deal with the uh, historic almost seven feet of snow event uh, at the time. So we're experienced. We also have the interim executive director and general counsel, Frank Hoare, the Thruway Authority, who's also monitoring uh, what's going on there as well. We'll have some updates. And uh, Superintendent Steve Nigrelli is in the heat of battle in Western New York. Uh, he is deployed there, making sure that our state police are able to respond to all the emergencies which um, are continuing. Uh, the good news is, is that we are very accurate. I appreciate the fact that our Commission of Emergency Services is a former chief of staff at the National Weather Service. So when she makes weather predictions, I know they're going to be right. So she was absolutely right. Uh, the bad news is, is that it was a horrific forecast, and now we're experiencing it in real, real time uh, at this moment. I called it a kitchen sink storm because it is throwing everything at us but the kitchen sink. We've had ice, flooding, snow, freezing temperatures, uh, and everything that Mother Nature could wallop at us this weekend. I declared a state of emergency that took a place effect at 6 a.m. this morning. And let's just start about with the statewide picture. Let's start with Long Island, Jones Beach, flooding, uh, coastal flooding, flooding up to three feet in parts of Long Island, New York City, especially uh, Howard Beach, the Rockaways, Broad Channel and Breezy Point are hit. I know that there's emergency crews on the ground. Uh, the water did go up over three feet. There are some reports of floodings in homes and businesses, but that is starting to abate, so that is not uh, sustained. But more rain is coming there. This was not a rain flooding event. This was a coastal flooding event, which is very different. We've had the flash freeze. What is a flash freeze? Uh, everything uh, west of I-81, uh, that's Syracuse line. Uh, is uh, already hit, and if you're east of I-81, it is still coming, and it won't thaw out for at least 24 hours. This is what makes the roads so treacherous. The rain comes down, and there's barely enough time between the rain and the icing for our snow plows and crews to be able to salt the roads. That creates incredibly hazardous conditions that the commissioner will speak about as well. Uh, at the same time, North Country is experiencing their normal snow and rain. They're handling it well. Southern Tier the same, but the flooding along the Hudson Valley, Capital Region, uh, seem to be just high. Hudson Valley and Capital Region, North Country, Southern Tier, all have high winds and rain, but no major, major issues. So the focus, once again, is on Western New York. I was just watching video of the waves crashing into my neighborhood. Um, I am from Hamburg, and I live in the city of Buffalo, and the lake effect storm is hitting in a, in, a, in a historic way. The Skyway, which I can see right out my window, has almost 80 hour, mile an hour winds, 80 miles an hour. The blizzard of 77, who those are old enough to remember, everyone has their blizzard of 77 story, I think it got up to 69 miles an hour that year. So we are seeing incredibly dangerous, hazardous, life-threatening, high winds, blinding snowstorms, in real time hitting Western New York at this very moment. So it's the lake effect, it's the national storm we saw elsewhere, but it's also the combination with the lake effect storm as well. So as, again, in preparation for what we saw was coming and has arrived is the declaration of emergency, getting people off the roads, uh, telling, uh, first of all, yesterday saying there'd be a driving ban for commercial vehicles, but now that has been expanded on uh, certain areas like Erie County to being all roads, um, some of the roads, we have hard closures on Route 219, 400, 290, 190. Uh, tandem and empty trucks on bridges across the New York City area as well. Ban on commercial traffic in the Peace Bridge. So the message is, the roads are freezing. The roads are going to be like an ice skating rink. And your tires cannot handle this. And that lends itself to great possibility of pileups. Uh, they can be dangerous, people can get stranded, 
We've already had a jackknife truck on the throughway clearing that out, but what that means is the rest of the traffic that's behind it are paralyzed. This is when it can be threatening for individuals, especially those who didn't take preparations. If you're going to be on the roads, if you had to be on the roads, this is when you make sure that you've got your own, you know, sandbags, kitty litter, whatever you need to put under your tires to help you get out, uh, flashlights, food, water, blankets. This is how you need to travel in the winter in New York State. So hopefully people heeded that warning, but there is a possibility of motors being stranded, which is why our state police are deployed and watching out for anyone who might need our help. Uh, again, the flash freeze and the ice roads are not going anywhere soon. This is going to be an event that's going to continue through the weekend. And the wind chills are going to be absolutely bone chilling. That's why this is a life threatening event. Uh, with over 100,000 power outages as we speak, they're trying to be restored as quickly as possible. That's why we brought in utility crews from all over other parts of the country to beef up our forces. We have over 7,000 utility crews out there to put the power back on, but you can understand, a limb comes down, takes the power lines on the ground. It is dangerous even for the utility crews to approach that in blinding snowstorms, so it's not going to be immediate. And that is why we're asking people to be safe at home, but I know there could be some very cold circumstances where people don't have the power they need to keep themselves, uh, keep their refrigerator on, keep the stoves on, so it's gonna be dangerous. Uh, we have over 100,000 statewide without power, 27,000 outages in Erie County alone, and right this time, 15,000 in Monroe County. We don't expect, again, to be long-term power outages. However, uh, any length of time when you have wind chills in places like Jamestown, Jamestown in the southern tier, close to, not far from Lake Erie, minus 24 wind chills expected, uh, sustained for over 12 hours, Buffalo negative 10, everywhere else in the single digits. So, so that's the report uh, at the high level. I'd like the commissioners to take it to the level to explain exactly what we're doing. But my message is for New Yorkers is simple. This is a life-threatening, dangerous event. Protect yourselves, protect your families. Do not travel until the roads are reopened, that you know it's safe, and I know it's hard for families. Many of us have delayed the opportunity to see family members. It is an important time of gathering especially after being separated during the COVID Christmases and Hanukkahs where people were separated. So I know there's a strong desire to be with loved ones at this time, but the lives of your loved ones and yourselves come first. And this storm will go away. And at the end of it, when we're doing cleanup, heading into the next, we wanna make sure that everyone is safe, that they heeded our warnings and we're not stranded on roads, uh, did not have a, a uh, devastating circumstance at home because of an inside generator or people using fireplaces in a way that does not, is not smart. So please, I want everyone to be safe. And as far as who's on our roads, you will, I'm okay seeing utility crews, first responders, fire police, state police, snow plows, and I'll even grant an allowance for Santa Claus to be out there. Uh, but that's it. Everybody else hunker down. And uh, for those from Western New York who have the big question, Yes, the Buffalo Bills did make it safely to Chicago. And if you haven't already traveled there, then you need to stay home and watch it on television. And if, with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Bray. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Um, just a few more details on state response and then also some safety tips. Uh, in terms of state response, my colleagues will speak to our response on the roads. As the governor said, we've added 2,200 additional linemen and women for the utilities. That puts us up at 7,700. That's the most we've had uh, during this administration uh, in advance of a storm. Uh, we opened the statewide emergency operations center. We've been running coordination calls with local officials, county officials, and state officials for the last several days. That will stay open as long as it's, as it's required. Uh, we've deployed generators, chainsaws, uh, sandbags uh, in western New York, and all of our stockpiles, all 10 across the state, are open and ready to deploy uh, that material as needed. Uh, Commissioner Dominguez will give an update on the roads, but just some safety tips. Um, number one, as the governor said, we really want everyone to stay off the roads. The roads are going to be icy statewide. That's going to be through tomorrow at least uh, before any of that abates. If you do have to drive, leave plenty of extra time and make sure you've got the things you need for safety in your vehicle. 
blankets, uh, a full gas tank, uh, some extra food, uh, extra water. Uh, in the event that you're on the eastern side of the state and you're still experiencing flooding, uh, two things. One, it's always important to have a plan to know how you're either going to get out of your home or get to high ground. And two, if you're in your vehicle, over half the deaths we experience due to floods happen in vehicles. Uh, as little as six inches of running water can sweep a, ve a vehicle away. So our message is always turn around, don't drown. Uh, in terms of power outages, do not approach down power lines. You should make the assumption that any down line during the storm is a live line. Uh, if you do lose power, it is going to be dangerously cold. Uh, many counties are setting up warming shelters and warming sites. If you need information about those, uh, reach out to local officials or to your non-emergency police line. Uh, most firehouses will also be available as warming sites for communities. Uh, so please don't assume that you can weather this cold overnight uh, without heat. You may not be able to. You should make a plan now while it's still light out. Uh, generators should never be run inside. They should never be run inside a garage, always 10 feet away from your home. Your stove should never be used as a source of heat. Your gas stove should never be used as a source of heat. Um, we will stay deployed for the remainder of the storm uh, and continue to coordinate with counties and local officials to make sure New Yorkers uh, stay safe. And we thank everyone, all of the workers out there who have been doing such a good job to date and are going to stay on the roads, uh, stay, stay off the roads, but stay at work despite the holiday. Uh, with that, uh, our Department of Transportation Commissioner, Marie Therese Dominguez. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Bright. Um, you know, it's a collaborative uh, effort to work on, on, uh, on a response like this. And so I appreciate all my colleagues from all the relevant state agencies, throughway state police uh, across the board. The governor really pulls together an amazing team uh, at each, of, uh, each and every turn. It was just last month, uh, Governor, when we were out in Buffalo saying, oh my goodness, we've got a record snowstorm, and yet here we are again with a statewide event. Uh, at the start of this holiday weekend, unfortunately, um, it looks like the, uh, the weather patterns here have turned into a real Grinch, and uh, it's really snarling a lot of people's holiday plans and certainly their travel plans. But that said, as the Governor has articulated, this really is a very serious statewide all-hazard event. Um, we've had rain, we've had high winds all across the state, and now uh, we're going to get some heavy snow, blizzard conditions. The wind speeds are setting records, as the governor articulated, uh, and it's moving into western and northern New York very significantly. In eastern New York, uh, we've seen flooding down trees along the Hudson Valley and Long Island. The roadways that had been impacted are slowly uh, the waters are receding, the roads are opening up again in those areas, um, but again, we're going to be faced with bitterly cold temperatures moving into the evening tonight. This is a really serious situation uh, with regard to life safety, and we all know that it's the holidays. Uh, we all know that uh, you want to be out with your friends and your family, but please, if you don't need to travel, please, please stay off the roads. Uh, especially in western and northern New York. These driving bans are um, already in place, as the governor articulated, in Erie County and the city of Buffalo. We've really got uh, a comprehensive, uh, collaborative effort going on, but really trying to keep people off the roads for their own safety. In western New York, the Peace Bridge is also closed uh, to inbound traffic. Uh, and what I mean by that is trucks, cars heading east, uh, it is closed to inbound traffic. Going west, uh, they're still allowed to, to cross. Um, that said, the Department of Transportation is fully engaged. The men and women of DOT work 24-7 around the clock to make sure that our roads uh, are as safe as they can be and addressing all of the hazards that are coming away. So regardless of what the holiday season brings us, they're around the clock. They're here to make sure that we're as safe as we possibly can be. Uh, DOT right now statewide has about 3,450 supervisors and operators. Uh, we have thousands of pieces of equipment. 
Uh, you can see some of it here. Uh, but the bottom line is we also have all of our mechanics on board working 24-7 to make sure that any equipment that goes down is immediately repaired and put back into service. We also have about uh, 71 staff and about 65 plow trucks and operators uh, and other personnel that we've um, additionally deployed, one, to supplement resources in western New York as well as northern New York up in the Watertown area. As the governor articulated, we do have roads closed uh, in Erie County for safety given the wind and the whiteout conditions. That includes State Route 400, State Route 219, uh, the 290, the 190, and State Route 5, otherwise known as the Skyway, the Buffalo Skyway. I wanna thank the men and women of New York State DOT. They do an incredible job. We really have one of the finest snow fighting forces in the country. And we're gonna be at it until this is actually done. Uh, it may take a few days here. But for the traveling public, please, if you have to be out, don't. Try not to go outside. We really need you off the roads. This is a very serious situation. Let our plow truck drivers, let our folks who can get out there uh, get salt down on some of this ice and then plow the roads when it snows. Let them do their jobs. They're experts. So again, be safe. If you are out there, do not crowd a plow. Please stay clear of the plow. And we'll get through this event, Governor. Uh, thank you for your leadership. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Frank Hoare at the Thruway Authority. Governor, Commissioner Dominguez, Commissioner Bray, Pager. Uh, I'm Frank Hoare, the interim director of the New York State Thruway Authority. The Thruway covers 570 miles from New York City out to Buffalo and then down to the Pennsylvania line. Weather conditions across the Thruway are incredibly varied right now, but as a day goes on, we know the temperature is going to drop off and the wet roads will freeze very, very quickly. Thruway's maintenance, and fa maintenance facilities across the state are staffed around the clock with our experienced and seasoned teams and they are actively responding to the storm. We are working closely with our state partners to ensure a seamless response across the state. Thruway shifted and deployed additional staff and equipment from its New York and Albany divisions to support snow and ice, and ice operations in western New York. We have over 700 personnel, 700 men and women of the Thruway Authority who are spending, have been and will be spending this holiday weekend dedicated to these operations. While the weather where you are, where you are may look fine, it can change in an instant and visibility can drop to zero with the forecasted winds. And to echo the governor, this is a serious situation. This is a blizzard warning in western New York and driving conditions are hazardous. We urge all motorists to stay off the roads and to be if you are on the roads, be conscious of first responders and our snowplow operators who are out there uh, working on, on these in these conditions. As of 6 a.m. today, all commercial vehicles are banned from New York State Thruway from exit 46 in Henrietta to the Pennsylvania border and a Niagara Thruway I-190 until fur further notice. Additional closures and speed restrictions may be impl implemented as conditions warrant. We urge all motorists to download our free mobile app and check our social media for the latest travel conditions. Thank you. All right, any questions? First on the storm. Any, are we going to see any what? Closures. Not at this time. You know, we, we're expecting to see, excuse me, Buffalo Airport has closed. All evening flights are canceled. Definitely not seeing family. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for the good news. <laughs> uh, no, the circumstances in New York City are different. You know, we had the coastal flooding, and now we're expecting rain, but we don't expect the rain to be of a magnitude that we can't handle. So we're not anticipating these closures because of this. Now, again, what could change everything are high winds, uh, but uh, Commissioner Brady, you wanna address that, but we're not seeing that at this time. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't expect the airports in New York City to close. There might be some significant delays, and obviously nationally we've seen over 10,000 canceled flights. Uh, the MTA had some flooding uh, on some of its LIR lines. Those have reopened uh, and everything's okay. Same with Metro North and the Hudson line. Uh, but right now the hazard in New York City will be the wind and the ice and the cold. Uh, it shouldn't continue to disrupt transportation. So, 
So it's one, it is it's, continues to be important to stay off the roads in New York City. Within the next two or three hours, they will also go through a flash freeze. And so those roads, while salted, and I know the Department of Transportation in New York City is doing a good job right now, will still be treacherous. They will still be icy. Uh, but if you are visiting family within the city, uh, you should absolutely get on the subway, take public transit, see your family that you can visit safely. Just know it's going to be very cold. Uh, it'll be about eight degrees with the windshield in the city, so bundle up. Any other questions? I will tell you, I went through the process of evaluating the credentials and the record of seven individuals who came through me as recommended by the Judicial Screening Commission. I had a chance to meet every one of them. I took the time. I also looked at their records. Some had lengthy records. Judge LaSalle has over 5,000 cases that he has been involved with. And for anyone to pull out one, two, or three cases out of that body of work that goes on through a lifetime, and to find someone as being anti-woman or anti-labor based on those, when you, if you actually read those cases that are in question, they have nothing to do with the woman's right to choose. And on the labor issue, it was a procedural decision to send it down for the trial courts. So I think there's been a mobilized effort from the beginning because certain individuals wanted individuals who were, on the, who were sent to me. But I'm looking for someone who you can't tell what their political disposition is. I want someone who's going to be looking at every single case, applying the law to the facts, and doing what's right. So I'm not having, never wanted to have a political litmus test that some may have wanted me to do. So I'm asking all the senators, because they are the only ones who are deeply involved in helping this process go toward the ultimate decision to allow this state to have the very first Latino head up the highest court in New York. I think that's historic, and all these objections will be overcome when the senators look at it with an open mind and actually study the nature of those cases. So I'm standing with him. Uh, I'm proud of this selection, and I encourage everyone to give him the fair hearing that he's entitled to. Uh, and I think that circumstances have improved dramatically since the time when a gallon of gas was $5 uh, just last summer. And we took an immediate action to give relief to New Yorkers, uh, not just our 17 cents per gallon, but many counties followed suit. A number of parts of our country did it for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, had it expire. I wanted to make sure that we had a long ramp to make sure that before it suspended or we resumed to what it had been, that we actually knew with certainty that the prices would not continue to escalate. They have been on a steady decline. And so at this point, uh, we are saying those are revenues that we need to maintain our roads to make sure that we don't have potholes in the winter time. Uh, it needs to go back toward, it's dedicated toward transportation. And I'm really proud that we were able to give this kind of relief as well as other relief to New Yorkers during this difficult time, especially more impactful ones such as a exp expediting the middle class tax cut or property tax rebates or other areas where we've listened to New Yorkers and tried to just help them out as the uh, ever escalating inflation has taken more money out of their pocketbooks. I have many bills on my desk, uh, the majority of which were passed. Uh, we had over 1,000, 1,007 bills that were passed. That is a record for the legislature that all had to be dealt with before the end of this year, so I will uh, address that in, uh, in proper time. Thanks, everyone. Pardon me? I think, it, I think New Yorkers would expect us to understand what the economics are at the time. 
is the price of gas continue to escalate based on supply chain shortages? And at the time, it was driven upward because of Russia's invasion in Ukraine uh, tightening the supply around the globe. We're going to keep an eye on that. If we do see circumstances where, you know, the prices in those record high levels that we dealt with last year, of course we're going to be open-minded to it. So, anything else? Thank you, everybody. Be safe. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Go Bills.